<clears throat> yeah, I haven't done this in a very long time. A really crazy long time. Hey, it's Miguel. It has been an extremely long time since I've done a video, but I did a couple of posts over the last couple of days and I've gotten a lot of messages, uh, a lot of private messages, a couple of emails, people asking, what is this thing? So hopefully I'm going to answer that question in the best possible way, a video with some audio that'll do it justice. We'll talk about it in just a second, but also I got a couple of messages about my patch base, my audio production patch base that I have here in the home studio and uh, a piece of software that I'm using that I'm also going to talk about. We'll do it later in this video, but for right now, let's talk about this thing because I think you're going to find it's stellar. A couple of weeks ago, I'm on YouTube and I'm watching Booth Junkies, Mike Delgadio, and he's doing an A-B comparison of this microphone versus a Neumann U87. So this is a brand new cardioid condenser. It's by a company called Tech Zone Audio. Never heard of them before, but everybody knows Neumann. And what they have made here is essentially a Neumann U87 clone, which anybody who knows anything about music production, audio production, radio, microphones in general, knows that the Neumann U87 is the holy grail of microphones. I mean, a brand new one is well over $3,000. And if you're lucky enough to get one of the classic ones from the late 60s, early 70s, they might be as much as $10,000. So to find out that this guy is under $200 and went head to head with Mike's Neumann, I was in, I was sold. That's all I needed. I was ready to get it. So just to make sure I wasn't falling for the hype, I went the extra step. I listened to his YouTube video back a couple of times, of course, in high definition mode, but most important with the Sony MDR7506 headphones and not through the computer sound card, actually through my Personas Studio 192 audio interface. So at that point, I know that I'm getting the best possible audio I can for what is an already compressed and, and down resed YouTube video. I mean, let's face it, YouTube is going to mess with it, but... I wanted to make sure that I got the best I could possibly get. And he AB'd the microphones a number of times. And the reality was this, you almost couldn't tell the difference. I mean, you literally had to sit there and look at where he put this microphone <laughs> and his Neumann U87. So I know that I saw the video pretty early on within like the first 15 minutes of it posting. And uh, I was sold. I was sold very quickly, so I immediately went to Amazon because that's the only way to get this thing. And of course, it was already sold out. I think it took maybe 15 minutes for them to sell out whatever stock that they had. So they gave you the opportunity to sign up for when they come back in stock. We'll let you know and we'll email you and you can buy it at a later date. So let's fast forward a couple of months, literally a couple of months to just last week, December. And there's the email. They're in stock. They're on Amazon. Go ahead and order it. I go to the website and once again, they have none. They're out of stock again. They sold out immediately. I emailed the company and I said, hey, by the way, I'd really love to get these microphones. Amazon's already showing out of stock. When are they going to be back on Amazon? They said, give it a couple of days. We just released a bunch of them. It'll take about that long for them to get the inventory together and you can order it. On top of that, they also said they were going to do a special discount for anybody who was inconvenienced and really wanted one and they had to wait. So I think they took $30 off of it. It's a $200 mic. I ended up getting it for $169. So great deal. Great customer service, by the way. Very, very quick to answer. So I'm randomly going through Amazon and I pull up the page and it says they're available. Did a very quick buy. Wanted to waste no time. I said, I have got to get one of these in my hands. It says it'll ship in two weeks, then it became a week, then it became three days. So the inventory obviously was coming in fast enough that they can get him out the door. And uh, I'm happy to say that on Monday, this guy showed up and I did a quick post on Facebook that a few of you saw and asked questions. So this guy comes in a really, really, really nice box, which I can't show you right now because I'm using it actually to hold up my camera in my vocal booth. But I've got some pictures. You can go back on the, the uh, post on Facebook and see it. Also comes with one of these little clown noses, which I don't have on because I want to be able to get the, uh, the true feeling of the microphone across on the video right now. Um, nice little shock mount. And the only thing that I had to buy because I, I was using my original boom with my RE20 was a new boom, which I went with the one from Blue. Um, for a hundred bucks, I really don't like it. It's kind of 
a, a pain to get going. As a matter of fact, if I just touch it, it'll probably bounce straight up into the air. The spring mechanism is not as good as the uh, spring mechanism I have on my RE20, but I'll deal with it. It's not too bad. And it actually has a really nice uh, hidden groove here for, for cabling. So again, blue could, I think, maybe improve on it, but it, it's sexy, it's sleek, it looks really good. And for the price, couldn't beat it. Another thing that the uh, microphone came with was a full chart graph. Uh, it says that it's uh, been spec'd out from 18 hertz to, no, I'm sorry, from 20 hertz to 18 kilohertz. Uh, and it has a, a nice little born on date, the serial number of the microphone. It's signed by hand. It's a nice package. They, they really make you feel good. I mean, they make you feel like you're buying a $2,000 microphone, but you're not spending the money on the $2,000 microphone. You are getting the audio that they have meticulously reproduced of that $2,000 microphone though. And one thing, and one thing I think you're going to agree with, this thing is silky smooth. It's not harsh. There's a lot of uh, large diaphragm condensers in the budget price range, and I'm not going to get on Rode or Blue. Uh, I've used those microphones. They sound okay uh, for somebody who doesn't know any better, uh, and it's never really gone head to head with one of the big bad boy microphones like a Neumann or an AKG or a Sennheiser. They're fine but they tend to be really harsh, uh, especially in the mid range on my voice. This thing, this guy, I like it. So if you're really serious about microphones and not somebody who has one of the super expensive boutique microphones, because if you've got one of those, you're, you're not gonna be looking at this thing. Or maybe you are, maybe you want it as a backup. This thing is gonna be perfect for voiceovers, perfect for singers. Um, I'll go out on a stretch. You could probably use it in a drum room on your overhead microphones. Uh, or just even the room mics. They, as of today, are not selling matched pairs. So you can't order two of them and expect them to be identical uh, because Amazon is doing the fulfillment. So what they're doing, I just got the email, is they're going to be doing duos in the very near future, probably in the next few weeks. But for right now, if you did want two of these um, and you ordered them, you would actually get something that sounds very close to itself but your second microphone is not a perfectly tuned match pair, which is one of the things Neumann's always been doing for many, many years. And a lot of people do buy dual Neumann's. How you can afford it, I have no idea. So what's the lesson here? I mean, you've been listening to this. You've been listening to me talking about it. It's $199. This is $199. Yes, there are some budget large condenser microphones, large diaphragm condenser microphones but I don't think you're gonna find anybody who's been so meticulous in reproducing the U87 sound. It, it's not gonna sound like this. This is a phenomenal sounding microphone for $199. And if you play your cards right, there'll probably be another promo that you can get a discount and get it like I did for 169. Again, I paid for this. This did not come, to, you know me, I don't do endorsements. I barely do videos. I'm not even an influencer. I just like this microphone so much, and so many people did ask about it, and by so many, I mean four. But hey, you four, now you're getting to listen to what it sounds like. So if you're just starting out, or maybe you're like me, you're putting you know your project studio back together, you want a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Um, this microphone here, my RE20, it's served me very well for a number of years. I love my RE20. It's a great sounding mic, but this guy here, Wow. As far as quality goes and the build construction, it's not a lightweight microphone. This is about a two pound microphone. Uh, I'll actually have to check the specs specifically to, to verify that. But this isn't, it, it's not a plastic toy. Um, this is very well built. When you hold it in your hand, you feel it and you realize this is a really nice, well-designed microphone. The fact that they do take the time to test everything individually to make sure you're getting something that you're going to be happy with that to me speaks volumes of the company as well. So 200 bucks, 199 bucks. I'm going to reiterate one more time. This is not a paid endorsement. This was paid for by me with my discover card. I'm not getting anything from tech zone audio for this. This is a stellar sounding microphone. It's great that they called it the stellar X2. I, I, I like that. It's kind of a cool play on, on the way they did that, but, you be your own judge.
hey, if anything, it's Amazon. You can always pick it up and return it. I mean, their their return policy is pretty liberal. It's usually a couple of weeks, so it's usually not too bad. Uh, again, if you've got a studio and you want to mess around a little bit, do I recommend it? You're listening to it. Again, this guy's not in use. This guy is. Okay, so one of the images, or a couple of the images that I posted, were black and whites of my studio setup. And one of them was a kind of close-up shot of my patch base. And it prompted some messages to me. Hey, your, your patch bays look cool. Your labels are really nice. How did you do those? Where did you get them done? So let me tell you how I didn't do them because method one did not work. I downloaded a template from Behringer. I tried printing it here. I bought some magnetic photo paper, almost destroyed my laser printer, by the way. I used one of Shay's paper cutters that she uses for school, destroyed the blade. I had to get her a new one. As a matter of fact, I got a whole new unit because I didn't know you could buy the blades separate, but so now we have two with some replacement blades and I put them on there and they, they were very flimsy. They looked good. Don't get me wrong. They looked good, but they were very, very flimsy. So a couple of the images that I posted the other night, I was, it was late, uh, happened to be up all night. Shay was at school really, really late. And, uh, I pulled out my Sigma F 1.4 and I was just taking pictures of my equipment and I did a really nice close up of one of my patch panels. So as you know, I, I've been putting together the project studio for the past few months, and I probably got it right now to the point where it's done. Uh, I went ahead and commissioned some labels from FedEx Kinko's, and I wanted something that looked really, really good, really, really professional. And while I tried doing them at home, it just didn't pan out. So I, I, first I got to say, I found a great piece of software, PatchCAD. It comes out of uh, England. It's a... Uh, 15 or $20 US uh, after the conversion from British pounds, uh, you get the license online and it's, it's a niche program. It's one of those things that, you know, you figure you're going to use it once you're going to do your labels once and you'll never touch it again. It comes with about two or 3000 templates for a lot of different patch panels, uh, audio, video, uh, different manufacturers, ADC, Samsung, uh, Behringer in my case, uh, ART, you name it, they're all in there. And then you can go in and individually craft the labels. It's, it's, it's got a really nice GUI editor. Uh, if you've used Word or Excel, this thing is the same. I mean, you can go through and make uh, your patch panels in just a number of minutes. Um, they've even got a nice example online as to how they do it. And uh, follow along, and you're there. So I, I figured out what I was going to do, what I was going to make them look like, the colors that I was going to use. And uh, the magnetic photo paper was not going to cut it. So I reached out to my local FedEx Kinko's and uh, the guy over there, I do all my projects for work over there. I said, can I get one of those car magnets, but can you cut it down for me to strips? And if so, how much would you charge? And he said, well, about 30 bucks. Uh, we have a laser cutter. We'll print them on the magnets. They will look phenomenal. And I was like, let's do it. So what's nice about PatchCAD is you export it to PDF. It's size accurate to your patch bay. So you're not having to shift stuff around. You're not having to hope that the holes line up with the words. If, if you tell it the right patch bay you have, it is perfect. The way he cut it, the way he put it together for me, again, everything was perfect. Put the magnets on and the pictures speak for themselves. They look fantastic. They're easy for me because, you know, I, I, I wired them the way I needed them to be. You know, the ins and outs that need to be above each other and fully normaled are. Uh, what doesn't need to be normaled isn't. My inputs are on the perfect side to, to go to whatever. Uh, the couple of analog effects that I've got, you know, they're color coded the way I know and I remember them. So it was, it was the perfect deal. Now, mind you, you're gonna say to yourself, Geez, dude, you spent $20 on the software, $30 for the printing. That's $50 to do something that you're never going to do again unless you change your configuration or add a bay or something. And you're right. You're absolutely right. But I'm a perfectionist. I don't like it to look half-assed. I never have. So I go above and beyond. And that was my above and beyond. That was the, if I'm going to do it, I want it to look good. So here's where the offer for the holidays comes in. For the first three people, and only three people, who PM me, DM me, whatever you want to call it, email me. Send me your patch bay configuration up to four. So if you've got like an SSL studio and you've got, you know, 12 patch bays, top and bottom, that's 24 strips, not going to touch it. But if you've got a small home or project studio and you've got up to four patch bays, I'll let you know the information I need. I'll do your base for you. I'll send you the PDF. You can take them over and have them printed up over at FedEx Kinko's. 
And if you want to go the route that I did was, you know, the magnet route, you can slap them on the front of your bays. It's yours. That's my Christmas present to the first three people who PM, DM, uh, email. And I will do that for you. So you don't have to buy the software. I've already made the investment and I'm more than happy to, uh, to work it out. We'll, we'll, we'll work out the logistics via messages. But for now, like I said, that's the offer. Uh, it's my way to kind of give back. I, I, I did the hard part. Now I'll do it for you and, uh, and make your patch base look really good. So that's it. Um, that's my last update for the year. Maybe I'll do a few more of these next year in 2020. I, I can tell you 2020 is shaping up to be a really important year. Uh, Shay's going to be graduating school. Uh, I start my 26th year with Motorola. And for those of you who are keeping track, 2020 will very likely be the year of the flan. Otherwise, it's been a pleasure showing off this thing, letting you hear what it sounds like. Oh, I just love that. That sounds so good. Yeah, it's stellar. Even those whispers sound really good. Anyway, um, happy holidays to you from my entire family, from myself, Shay and Hagen, the three dogs, the one cat, the chicken. Happy holidays. Looking forward to 2020. And uh, if you're out partying over the holiday weekend, please remember, don't drink and drive. I want to make sure you're still my friend in 2020. Cool? Cool.